pretty remarkable to be able to see where social media is landing right now. Social media is literally allowing individuals doing an actual brutal coup and murdering their neighbors to be on social media, but they're then do all these accusations for President Trump to be able to block him. So President Trump is blocked. The leadership of Hamas is not. President Trump is blocked. The leadership of Iran is actually not blocked. Uh, you've got President Trump is blocked. Uh, you've got leaders in Nicaragua uh, that have led through an actual coup and a transition in their government. They're not blocked. Over and over and over again, I can walk you through world leaders that are brutal dictators uh, that have led an actual coup in their country. They're still on social media. President Trump still continues to be able to be blocked on this. I mean, honestly, I think big tech is a joke at this point. You know, if you were going to censor uh, conservatives for their thoughts about, you know, vaccines or their thoughts about, you know, the, the 2020 elections, but you're not going to take the Russians off the platform who are literally putting out disinformation, not misinformation, disinformation about what's happening in Ukraine, I think it's a joke. I think it's atrocious. They need to actually be consistent. If they were consistent, nobody would have a problem. But the issue is that they're being politically subjective simply because, in my view, they support Democrats and a liberal ideology and a liberal agenda. It's amazing to me that uh, this, is the, this is the path that big tech seems to choose, where authoritarians are welcome to use big tech, where the Ayatollah can call for death for America, yet they'll censor a president of the United States. Well, it's the ultimate hypocrisy, right? I mean, this is what happens when you have an unholy alliance between a liberal party and a liberal press. I mean, this, you can see it in other countries around the world. This is one of the first things that happens when you erode your self-determination, your freedom in certain countries. So we have to be on guard about this. I mean, when I was in the Senate, we tried to get bills passed to rein that in. I mean, this is outrageous. And it's absolutely the hypocrisy of the left right now who is putting up with this and actually encouraging it. A lot of these people out here who are telling the truth are censored off of social media. But you know who's not censored off of social media? Literal terrorists. Jack Dorsey, Zuckerberg, when he's not putting sunscreen all over his face and surfing, is taking down truth tellers and allowing people who are true terrorists in Iran, in Russia, everywhere to flourish and spread their message. They're recruiting terrorists through Twitter and they're taking conservatives and looking to stifle our movement and growing our movement. It's disgusting and these people need to pay a price. Section 230 must be repealed. This is a preference thing. This goes back to Apple's guide. A Apple in their guide, their user guide says literally they don't allow things on that they consider creepy. It's a totally subjective piece. Facebook has on there that they don't allow illegal activity unless it's illegally crossing the border, then they do allow that. Uh, so there's all this double standard that actually happens. It's really a subjective issue of the far left folks that are in Silicon Valley. If they like it, they allow it. If they don't like it, they block it. And they seem to like Hamas. They seem to like these other dictators worldwide. They just don't like President Trump, and so they block him. Yeah, it's, it's unthinkable that uh, right now Putin has a Twitter account, but many conservatives in this country don't. It shows fully what these big tech companies are made of and what their core worldview is. And we, uh, I believe, once we take back control as a majority in the uh, House next year and the Senate, I believe we're going to see some significant legislation that will bring back our First Amendment rights of free speech without harassment and fear coming from uh, be it government or big tech. Right now in Ukraine, well, we need to see what's going on. The images that are being sent of missiles striking homes with, with mothers and babies in their arms, I mean, this needs to get out. And so any of the social media that are suppressing the truth of what Russia is doing in Ukraine, stop it. We need the truth. Well, look, canceling and silencing people is in, is in lazy book burning. That's what they're doing. They're canceling and silencing people uh, on the internet. It's book burning. That's exactly, you know, it's, it's what you know, we saw, we've seen in, uh, with socialism. They always ultimately have to get rid of everybody's ideas, and that's exactly what they're doing. So we've got to stand up. We've got to hold big tech accountable. If they're going to be publishers, if they're going to pick and choose what they want on, on their sites, uh, then they've got to be held accountable. And you can't allow thugs like Maduro and Venezuela and the Ayatollah on a, on a site and then not let uh, you know, a conservative in America on the site. It doesn't make any sense. But people are being canceled all over this country because they have a different view than, than what some of the big tech want. Hey, we face interesting on our tweets. We face throttling on social media all across the board. But I believe when you start seeing that Donald Trump is kicked off social media right now, you, you literally have Vladimir Putin 
who we've all seen videos of his fighter jets literally bombing homes with young civilians in them. You hear young children screaming in the background. We see old women whose faces have been marred up by the bombs dropped by Vladimir Putin. Uh, we see his soldiers posting videos, selfie videos, of them sending missile salvos into civilian-held areas. Uh, we realize that social media doesn't actually care about justice. They don't actually care about doing what's right. They just care about pro pro progressing with their woke ideology. And so I believe we need to get all social media back and under control and break up big tech monopolies because they have far too much control. Well, the, the frustrating thing about Facebook is they want to, they want to, and all of the social media in general, they want to hush the conservative voice, right? So they, they down throttle or they completely censor uh, that conservative voice. And then, you know, they amplify the Ayatollah and Vladimir Putin and all these despots all over the world. I mean, it's almost incomprehensible and it's clearly un-American. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, that frustrates us all the time. And right now in Ukraine, well, we need to see what's going on. The images that are being sent of missiles striking homes with, with mothers and babies in their arms. I mean, this needs to get out. And so any of the social media that are suppressing the truth of what Russia is doing in Ukraine, stop it. We need the truth. What we should do is implement my big tech legislation that I put forward. I haven't been able to get a single Democrat to join me, but it makes complete sense. What we would do is we would regulate big tech. We would treat them like a common carrier. That would require them to give non-discriminatory access. And if they want to come in and censor, they're going to have to explicitly state the criteria. Today, under Section 230, they're allowed to come in and have very broad criteria because they use the language that says, are otherwise, you know, otherwise offensive. And they are interpreting that very broadly to basically say anything that's conservative. Voice. This goes back to Apple's guide. A Apple, in their guide, their user guide, says literally they don't allow things on that they consider creepy. It's a totally subjective piece. Facebook has on there that they don't allow illegal activity unless it's illegally crossing the border. Then they do allow that. Uh, so there's all this double standard that actually happens. It's really a subjective issue of the far left folks that are in Silicon Valley. If they like it, they allow it. If they don't like it, they block it. And they seem to like Hamas. They seem to like these other dictators worldwide. They just don't like President Trump, and so they block him. It is amazing that Section 230 was designed to promote more free speech, and yet it has created a safe haven for Facebook and Twitter and others to limit what, who, to decide who to gag and who not to gag. And it's no surprise that people on the left seem not to get gagged and conservatives get gagged. Even worse than that, somebody who might question the effectiveness of a particular vaccine, let's just say Sputnik out of Russia, which is a terrible vaccine uh, by comparison to the others, isn't even allowed to do that without being muffled. So, uh, you know, do I think that, that when somebody invades another country, pulling them down off of as many social media platforms as possible makes sense? Of course. But I think the more mundane has to be that when in doubt, free speech should be allowed everywhere. And I'm, I'm willing to have reprehensible free speech rather than have less people able to speak their mind.